This episode of Two Season a Pod is brought to you by Whispers. Whispers, they make you turn your turn the volume up all the way because you, you can't quite hear what they're saying. And you think for a second, is my speaker broken? Because suddenly everyone's really quiet and I have no idea why. And then you crank up the volume all the way and the next thing you know, the theme song's blaring. And, and then your partner wakes up because they're sleeping in the other room and they're like, honey, God damn it, why is the office theme song blaring? I'm trying to sleep. Enjoy the whispers. Continuing tonight on Two Seas in a Pod. 96.7 on your. Two Seas in a Pod, 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 Two Seas in a uh, and peace here in the office, um, Cam, Beirut. because what I have to say is is, is that in terms of podcast success, 2020 just wasn't quite where we thought it would be. No. No. It was a tough one. I, I think at least I anticipated uh, cheerful employees, kind of like a very fun uh, workplace environment. You know, people can meet by the, by the you know, the water cooler. Uh, share the share little cups of water and just laugh about their weekends because this is two season a pod. You know, it's it is it is such a welcoming podcast to all all colors and creeds, not just what cis white men. No, you can be other things and listen to this podcast too. You can be um, uh, a, just a non cis white man. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, anything else? I'm sure there are others. We'll uh, we'll look into yeah, a Venn diagram others. of what it might be. But you heard his voice right there. His name is Camel Claire. My voice, my voice and name, uh, belongs to that of a man named myself, and that is Cameron Osborne. Uh, welcome to episode 51 of Two Season a Pod. Uh, we have the same first name, Cam. Did you just have? Did you ever, did you ever, have you ever thought about this? That reminds me of the one time when I was driving by a Zellers, and I'm like, Ooh. "Holy cool. smokes, Zellers sounds like Sellers." And someone looked at me, and they're like. You didn't never picked up on that one, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a callback too. Oh, have I, have I said that in the past? No, no, just Zellers. Uh, just a story oh. mentioning Zellers uh, is a story of at least ten, fifteen years. It's the target of the. Um, <clears throat> it's the target before target. I got a good story about Byway that I'll, that I'll tell What's you about. Byway? Ooh, that might be too deep of a callback. That was a dollar store type of uh, variety mart kind of thing um, pre- before Dollarama. You know, before Dollarama, okay. <clears throat> there was Byway, another Canadian operation cam. I had a similar story to uh, PetSmart. Um, I, I, I didn't, I, I don't know what I thought it was, but the day that it was sort of explained to me, or I came to the realization that it is both like pet, like there's a comma or sorry, there, you know, there, there's a, whatever it is, uh, apostrophe before think, and after the S. So by way, like, no, no, no. Okay. Oh, Cam, we have moved on already. We have moved oh. on. I just mentioned pet smart. I wasn't sure how you were tying all those in. I was waiting for the. The callback, as they call it in the business? I don't the think that's what they call it, Cam, but if you notice, the apostrophe is on both sides of the S. And I don't know how old I was when I kind of figured out that it was kind of both pet, like a pet's mart, a mart belonging to a pet, and also kind of that, like, the pet's, or like the pet smart. Like, I kind of kind of put those two things that I mean, it was kind of, it's kind of two things. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, pet smart itself doesn't mean much if you just say it in context like that. No, is the pet is the pet smart or is it a pet smart? I think you'd be like a smart shopper, maybe is what they're going for. Yeah, but it, it's a, it's a store for pets, so the pet is well, the one the that needs to be smart. Store, um, actually, dr- <laughs> driving home from your uh from your birthday party post episode uh post big episode five live Cam's birthday. 
Why? Um, driving home with a friend who had cats and sort of uh, the way we were taken home, we were driving past a pet smart, so we did have to pull over <laughs> and grab uh, some good, some, you know, pet stuff, cat stuff. Oh, yeah. I never had to buy cat stuff. When I, the last time, every time I go there now, they ask me at the checkout, they're like, would you like to donate or would you like to buy three cans of cat food mm. for cats in need? And I'm like, no, not. No, I don't like cats. Stop asking. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's your go-to line when when you get asked that question? At, no thanks. You know, yeah, no frills, scrap tires. No thanks. Just, just, just like a happy. Like I'm not like. Yeah, I'm just like, no thanks. Yeah, that's good. No, I think inappropriate. No know, thank you. Um, I think my father would say, uh, like, not no thanks, not today. Like he would kind of add. Uh, not today. Yeah. See, no. uh, my um, my opinion of it is because I've thought about this, as mm. most people probably have. These people that they they're asking the question so many times, they're not judging your answer anymore. It's just, it's just a robotic process, right? So if you're they're judging your answer when you're trying to be like, oh, not today. I've already donated uh, yesterday, and that's the reason why I no longer. It was a twelve. I I don't know if you remember me coming through yesterday, but. I actually donated $20 <laughs> to this foundation. I was at the so, other cashier uh, with yeah. with the other, was, I think his name was Stacey? Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Chad, maybe. Anyway, yeah, we had a conversation about our favorite cat food. And um, listen, so I donated cat food because I'm a good person. But mm -hmm. hey, not today. Just, just this today. So I think the, the standard answer is just I'm okay. No thanks. Blah, blah, blah. And I think that works. Um, I think if you start to lie to them, they're gonna. I think they're gonna see right through every lie. Because I think there's not many people who have uh, clever ones for you. Yeah. Besides, yeah. If it's not something pleasant, then what the heck are you doing in the first place? Cam, you're wrong though. You know, I, these. I think these are the things that yeah, I know, not many people think about. No, maybe. And that's why we're okay. Tell me, tell me what we do for this one. Oh, okay. Social so, scenario. I like this. Uh, social scenario. We put ourselves. So, you put ourselves. Put the opposite into a a, a, a specific so situation. Social situation. How we this act. one's an interesting one. And, it was an interesting thing that happened. Um, I had headphones on, so I clearly was not listening to anything a word anyone was saying to me. So wait, Cam, and are you are you going to phrase this as a question to me, or are you going to tell me your yeah, answer? No, this is okay. the story. This is the story that ends in a question. Yeah. Um. So I'm walking into a Food Basics, and a lady, and I'm not again headphones on, not taking them off because I'm at Food Basics and I refuse to speak to anyone. <laughs> um. Embarrassed that I'm there to start with. <laughs> Kind of gets in front of me, clearly an employee, and just, like, pushes a cart in front of me. And I kind of, like, implying, like, take the cart. Okay. Weird. I'm only buying one or two things, so what do you do? And then I'll kind of play back what that person does. Okay, so let me do this. Uh, so this is a star evaluation. So situation. Yeah. Uh, situation. Dis situation. Uh, discount grocery store employee pushes conveyance object in front of me. Inconvenience object, in my opinion, <laughs> but sure. Uh, what's the tea? What's, what's the tea? Task. The tea is task. Uh, task. Buy purchase. Um. The the tomatoes. The the box of cam. I think they're you call them or the ones that you buy. I think they're called like reverse magnums. They're kind of like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they're kind of like whatever the opposite of bag. You you have just a couple things to buy. The reverse magnums. Okay. Um. A is action. Size. A is action. Uh, yes. Action. I think hmm. no. Now this is the tough. Is, is, is that the A? Is that the A? We're in need. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll be taking some notes next week. I'm sure. What, what's but, the action that we took because we got no? We got blocked. Uh, you we got blocked. Block the front door. So this lady is holding the cart in front of you and kind of like, you know, positioning yourself like you're trying to get to the hoop and she's stopping you. Um, the, I would, uh, I would take a headphone out, one, you just, what? just one, I just I take, take one headphone, headphone out, yeah. out uh, mm -hmm. and then probably look at them and say something not, like, p totally nice, you know, on the pleasant scale, it's probably sitting around, like, a 65%, uh, it'd probably right, something so to the effect of, like, can I help you? Like, okay, and, and, and kind of, like, shocked look on my face, maybe right. to get them to be like the one saying, you know, who is possibly in the wrong. Unless, right. yeah, okay, so that's what I'd say. I'd probably, one headphone okay. out, look at can, them, can look at them kind of mm -hmm. blank stare and say, can I help you? 
Can I help you? Okay. Okay. Curveball comes the next. <laughs> this lady hardly speaks English and says, you need. Um, and then, and then my mind would put together, I'm like, okay, so English is not your first language. Um, you're kind of probably doing something in which management maybe told you, maybe there's miscommunication down the line. And then I'd say, smile on my face, go back to high pitch voice camera and say, oh, no, thank you. Take cart. No, thanks. I'm good. You, you need take cart. No, thank you. And then like, but like this whole time, I'm kind of like pushing myself past. Kind of pushing through and you're trying to get through and she's trying to be the most pleasant possible, but also being like, take this cart, take this cart without giving any explanation. To mm -hmm. that. That's tough. why. That was tough. So what'd you do? I plowed right through. Well, I plowed, plowed through and luckily the lady behind me is a lot ruder than you or I and just goes, he doesn't want a fucking cart, and I don't want one fucking either. And then we just both walk through. Yeah, see, that's, uh, yeah, that's not what you do. Uh, that's not what you do to a person. No, because it's just rude. I mean, she's obviously upholding something. So then I go back, like, a day or two later, and I run into the same thing. But now, instead of her kind of, like, pushing the cart in front of me, she has put two carts blocking the ass <laughs> way. She really wants... What is it? Is this Food Basics want people to use carts? Well, th so I said, like, I don't want a cart. Yeah. And she's like, the the government in Ontario is requiring you to use a cart. Like, you know, broken English way of saying it. And this is how we're tr keeping track of how many people are in the store. And I'm like, this is the s thing in myself. Oh, this is wow. the stupidest way you could do this. Wow. I'm because pretty sure he, here's what both of those things are dumb <laughs> and not right. Yeah. Here's what happens. Because I grab the cart and I'm going, I'm getting tomatoes. I don't need a cart and I'm not going to push this thing around. As soon as you walk in right to the right, there's about 15 carts right beside the lettuce. Because everyone's doing the same thing. They're going, I don't need a cart. If you're going to force it on me, I'm just going to take it. Go, thank you. Leave it there. See, and I think, uh, Cam, this story is we crazy for a couple reasons. First off, um, shopping carts are not free. They are a dollar deposit that you stick into that little machine, right? Where? And then, uh, like every single grocery store that is a grocery store, or like at least the I no frills that, I, thing, yeah, at least the no frills I, that I, I go I to. I haven't been. I haven't. I haven't had one of those. I probably ran to like one of those in my life. You put a quick buck in there, Cam, and then you fuck I don't it. Carry I, I, as a like Well, James. that's the conscious thing. You're like, I'm going grocery shopping, therefore, I need a loony. You put a loony in your always, pocket. Do you, is this multiple grocery stores that you're doing this at? <sighs> at least when I go, uh, I go to a couple different no frillses, and that's the case. So it's always no frills, though. At least, yeah. I'm trying to think. Of... I think that's a no frills thing, then. Okay, well. I don't think Sobeys makes you do that. Okay. Yeah, I, I remember going to another one when I was uh, in university. I think it was Sobeys, maybe? But it was like a quarter instead. It's probably just areas where there's a lot of, like, car cart theft. Right. So I guess now I'm a cart theft, cart theft at your food basics. Pam, but there's the... Some, but what is... It's not and, and Cam, I'm sure this has to be scratching your head. The inefficiency of that system is wild. It's terrible. It's so easy to overcome. Instead of forcing this lady to, like, come up with clever... Because I can just imagine, like, being down or like... You gotta find a solution and keep these people out. Well, and or like, or what I wonder, Cam, like, and this and this might be like funny me asking a question, but like, doesn't ev in in Kitchener Waterloo doesn't every single uh, grocery store have a security guard standing out in front of it, regulating how many people can come in? I uh, haven't seen one. No. <laughs> See, so I can't think, Cam. I think this is part of the funny difference between both of our like lockdown situations, in which, in my case, that has been happening since March. Every single uh, grocery store either will have a secure an LCBO, will have a security like a, a like a like a store employee or kind of like an outside service security guard standing like kind of in the doorway and making sure that you know okay if some people are coming out you come out you guys wait they have the little fucking clicker on them like they're uh, like they're working the carnival or something uh, that's that is so much a part of my life for the last nine months that uh, are you off? Often waiting in line to get into places. Not often. Uh, it was when it's like in March, April. It was 
it would be you're a guarantee to wait. Now, yeah. um, I waited in line at the LCBO the other day because I went the day before New Year's Eve. So that one's probably more on me. Um, uh, but I probably waited for like 10, 15 minutes before I could get in. Um, grocery stores, uh, less often. If you go like kind of midday during the week, um, you probably won't be waiting at all. Uh, and then other store, and then yeah, most you're waiting in line for coffee if you're going to get coffee. That's a really? big one. that's a big one. One of the coffee shops that uh, uh, Jess and I frequent quite often. You're you're waiting in line for like 15 minutes because they don't allow anybody in the store at all. So everybody's just like ordering from the doorway of this coffee shop, and then you have to wait is there it, until you get your coffee. Is it like a local coffee shop? Or yeah, something? yeah, like a local trendy hip. Yeah. Um, you know, there's their employees Please have jean jackets. Ice, yeah, they have chest tattoos. Uh, um, yeah, um, their their Instagram Flat profiles have like yeah. a bracket. Will have like bracket she slash her. Um, uh, even yeah. though they're like you know have the always the been is not too. It just says whatever. Yeah, they've they've been like, straight yeah. women their entire life and never once questioned their sexuality. Yet they still right. have to put she slash her. Um, right. Slash they've sis, never they've slash, never had any form of gender matter, confusion. Slash, and judge. it's like let's make yeah. this about me all of a sudden. Yeah, it's it's uh, you know it's a, it's a trendy place to be. And Cam, I think that's one thing that maybe businesses around you are struggling with are how to implement these systems. Um, well, she slash her slash sis slash doesn't matter. <laughs> yep, slash uh, everyone pay attention to me, Cam. Um, because yeah, every single and and this is like a common thing now, right? It's it's sort of the interaction in which you have with the security guard is now that new or a new uh, social interaction you have. I like to you know you wait, you give them tons of space, you know, super yeah. patient, and when they do let you go, I will often you know, nod my head and say thank you. Mm -hmm. um, or Excuse some me. or something to that effect because I'm sure and I haven't seen anything uh, but I'm sure the security guards uh, deal with a lot of stuff probably um, I, well, I'd, say less, I'd say less I'd say less here in the city I think uh, I just feel yeah like um, like you mentioned about there was like the like the cookie shop or something that's what I was getting that buddy to. was wild out the yeah last line I've been in and yeah. that guy was the guy freaking out going. Come on, I'm starving. I'm starving here. I'm over die. here. I need a cookie. I'm, I'm starving. Well, Cam, even just like last night, I went for a little walk, uh, just kind of up, uh, just kind of around the neighborhood, um, and it's gotten to the point, at least here in the city, where just walking down the street, I'd say seventy-five to eighty-five percent of people are covering their face walking down the street. Um, so when it comes to a lot of those rules, I know the city now, um, if you are in a lineup, you have to be wearing the mask. Uh, and that's something that I do right away. Like if you're waiting in line at the grocery store, makes sense. you put on your mask and then you wait in the little fucking, you just stand on the line <laughs> wherever, you know, wherever it tells you to stand. Um, I saw, so I, I could put, but right? I could see these implements being new to people in your region, Kitchener, Waterloo. Of yeah. course, we record the podcast in a remote area that we're not even going to tell you about. It is so remote, you could not even, like, Google Maps hasn't updated that area, kind of, of it's Southern so Ontario. It's so remote, there's oil <clears throat> undiscovered here. Undiscovered so. fossil fuels. That we're just raking in, by the way, and we found these fossil fuels because we were digging our hole for, of course, Cam, our bottomless piggy bank. For those of you who don't know, it's a massive pi uh, porcelain pig, um, and he has big bottoms, <laughs> he has big pants on, and they're pulled around his ankles, exposing his bottom um, to make him truly bottomless cam one thing i'd have to say because of these because these things have been here for yeah nine months for me i i feel as though anybody who would have had a, a very public outcry issue um they've either resolved that come to terms with it or figured out their own way but cam these things are very much new for people in your uh in your home region yeah i, I haven't <laughs> seen any clash conflict but then again i'm not out much though mm -hmm. I'd like to talk to the people of the security guards. I guess my last clash was that person who's like, he doesn't want a fucking cart, and I don't want one either. And I don't know. I don't like when people talk that way, but it was uh, Be quite a also just tough for someone who doesn't speak the language. Yeah. Because you're like, she can't come back with a witty quote and be like, well, look at you, trash ash skank. You smell like darts from fucking last week. <laughs> very, very much so, right? And hopefully, hopefully, at least that grocery store just purchase, yeah, purchases a fucking people counter. And yeah. just has somebody standing, you know, you kind of put put them in mitts, put them in a big coat, and have them just stand at the door. Uh, oh, <laughs> I got one for you. 
Go for it. Ooh, so Dollarama was, has security guards too. What's that? Even Dollarama has security guards. Oh, not a chance. Here. Uh, Canadian or Canadian Tire. I, I've been in there twice. They have people standing up front. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But yeah, literally every okay. single place where you go. I got, into, I got another social situation for you. Get social on. situation. This, one's not in times. this is years ago. I was like sort of seeing this girl. And she worked at sort, sort of seeing of those... her because uh, you lost uh, this was you, you partial vision out of one of your eyes, so you were sort of seeing her, uh, and Correct. you couldn't really nailed it. Um, and she worked at one of those what's those places that sell? I think oh Lush, that's where it was. It was Lush. You know that place? It sells a bunch of like bullshit charcoal yeah to, like, it's cosmetic type stuff yeah 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 yeah. garbage okay <laughs> so um she's not working mm -hmm. or maybe she was working let's say let's say okay she, she was not working mm -hmm. I'm listening. we go in there because she wants to go see her friend um we're in the mall and then uh we're about to leave and she looks at me she goes like you should get something they count how many people have come in and come out and judge their metrics based on how much, like, if someone buys something or not. So say, like, you know, 80% of the people walk in, buy something. Okay. And I kind of look, and I'm like, no. So what would you do? So I guess, <clears throat> so I guess essentially what she was saying was, hey, you should buy something from the store so the store does better. So, no, no, so the employees look like they're better at converting people once they get into the store. Hmm. Um, okay, uh, situation. Um, uh, Slam Piece wants to see friends at work. Uh, ta task, um, get out unscathed. Just yeah, this, this be, one, this, just, 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 your task is really just be a shopping bag. This one, yeah, this one, this one doesn't walking. translate well to the star situation. Um, yeah, it's so weird. I'd be, that's, I, I truly cannot picture what I would ask if someone asked me that question. Um, especially someone that you are trying to be friendly towards. I would probably and, just and say. The friends. Like, no, it wasn't like the employees. It was the girl telling me that. Yeah. That I was. With one eye seeing, and like it would just be, I'd be like, no, <laughs> I don't. Need okay, oh no, I probably say why. I probably say why do you want me to? And then if she, and she said because they track the metrics, and then and I'd say that's not a good enough. That's not a good yeah. enough reason. Okay. Like you have a job, yeah. whether or not I buy, whether or not I buy a little hand cream. Yeah, I don't um, need to spend seventeen dollars. Or on I might try. What if I tried to spin toes? it and go like, oh, you could buy something for me. Hey, Ooh. you know, maybe I try to spin it that way, because um, then why wouldn't she want to buy something? She knows I the know, rule I... about the metrics. Why'd you bring me in the store? Why'd you bring me in the store? You brought you were brought on the store under false pretenses. You didn't know that you had to buy something when you were going in, right? No, it should be like a timeshare presentation, right? You can go in, you see the place, and then afterwards, it's like, hey, do you want to commit? And you're like, no, I walked around, I saw I saw some stuff, but it didn't quite. Uh, tickle my feather. So now give me those David Copperfield tickets live at Caesar's Palace. Yeah, I can't wait to sign up for one of those babies and just uh, disrupt the whole thing. Now I'm gonna be a buyer. <laughs> I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna I'm gonna walk out. Thinking, I'm like, listen, babe, you don't think I got a good deal? I got a deal. The I worked these guys. I worked them. <laughs> we got two weeks <laughs> in February. It's like February. Did I say that wrong? February. You're like, hey, honey. Okay, I got, I got, I, I swindled them. You got to hear. See, they wanted me. I they, swindled them. They wanted me They're to buy. They're paying me. They wanted me to buy one week. But here's what I did. I bought two weeks. We sell that second week. Suddenly, we're vacationing for free. And then I started thinking, hey, well, you know, if we have vacation for free, what if we get paid to vacation? So I bought three weeks. We sell those two weeks. We're getting paid to vacation. And we're laughing. So, that's it. <laughs> All the way to the bottomless piggy bank. I'm laughing. Of course, it's grotesque. His bottom is grotesque. His pants have been pulled all the way down towards his little hooves. Um, Cam, it's a big week uh, here on the show because I guess this is our first show of 2021. Oh, it is. You're right. That it's, is? Uh, 
It doesn't feel like a new year. It doesn't feel like a new year. Did you spend uh, the evening doing anything special? Anything uh, you've never done before? Uh... Oh, uh, I was. I ate sushi and then I fell asleep at eight thirty and woke up at eleven forty-five and then I went. Happy New Year, and then I was in bed by 12.06. Wow, 12.06. That has to be a new record for uh, for you, for a new New Year's sleep record for you. Well, yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> the tamest I've had in a while. I mean, I would have loved to have a big party, but government forward since I'm not allowed to. Now, is this the uh, is this the first New Year's you've almost slept through, or is this something that's happened in the past? Oh, since I was a child, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about New Year's Eve that like you just want to pack it in? <laughs> I think you're you get too eager about you get too eager about starting the new year on a good foot. So for you, it's like I want to be up five thirty a.m. on the first, get a quick workout in, I you know, do my it. laundry, clean the house, get rid of all the Christmas decorations. Cam, uh, all the plants are <laughs> the plants well, are I back. Guess one thing we did do is we cleaned the entire place on New Year's Eve. That's like, nice. Did a big junk raid, like go through all the extra storage space Mm -hmm. because you know sometimes like i don't know about you but i find when i buy anything over a hundred dollars that's technology based i keep the box i keep the box for everything and it's important more people should keep more people should be keeping boxes for things end of story see i changed my opinion on this this year because i went through and i'm like i have the box for this my wireless headphone set (laughs) which is like 70 dollars, and i'm like i don't need this i have this is just taking up space one thing i love about the uh bluetooth headphone box because i also have my bluetooth headphone box is that it is probably i don't know 14 times the size of the headphones uh like and even it just sits in the closet and you think about you think about it too because some a lot of boxes make sense in a in a situation in which you're going to move um you know i own these uh massive speakers right they're probably like you know a foot a foot wide foot and a half tall foot and a half deep they probably weigh 25 pounds it's nice that they have the boxes with the styrofoam it fits nicely everything stays in there right box makes sense headphones that you can pretty much just kind of coil up and put in your pocket like you do literally every single other day um, literally these never go back in the box <laughs> but when you're moving never. i don't know it's almost like at this point i want to keep hold on Warm to the box been gone for years I, I, <laughs> I want to hold on to the box at this point just so when I do move, I'm going to put them back in the box and be like, I knew there was a reason I kept that. Um, oh. the, 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 real, the super popular JBL uh, Bluetooth speaker, you have the same one. I have the same one. Oh, it comes with a great box. Fantastic too. box. Guess what? It's, 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 bare, it's slightly bigger than Still the speaker. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like the, the, the size to box ratio is good. And I, I'm telling you, I've kept it. I'm looking at it right now. See, yeah, I think I threw mine out. I'm looking through the boxes. Here's what I got left. Okay. I got my phone box. Good box. Good box to keep. Good I, box. Again, not really certain on that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I think for six months, I can keep that just in case you weren't here. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, even then. Even then, I don't know. My work phone box, because I feel like I'm going to have to send that back, and they're probably going to want the box. Exactly. And then... Um, this one's kind of silly, but this, okay. There's no silly boxes, only silly items. This one's a, this one's a full one. This one still has everything in it. It's the vape that we got, Shannon and I, it's the cleaning kit and contains like alcohol wipes and Zeus purifier juice. (laughs) And it's pretty Zeus juice. I don't like, and it says it, it, it's like a natural cleanser or something. And I just question, I'm like, is this just rubbing alcohol? It's just isopropyl alcohol, probably. Um, but hey, you kept it. Well, yeah, and then, but I got rid of the vape box. I'm like, I don't need this. This is silly. But yeah, a lot of box cleaning. And just, you know, you, you, you end up keeping boxes, you don't need them. And then it just clogs up space. And then, yeah, then then one day you move and you look at it and you go, should I really bring this with, with me to my next house? Mm-hmm. And the answer, if you think about that yearly when you clean your place, would I bring this to my next house? And the answer is no. 
kaputs. I think yeah, the the bigger the thing, the more uh, I think it should warrant box keeping. Uh, like I mentioned, my speakers, my Mac Mini, yeah. that's a big box. Uh, my funniest box that I have is one for my audio interface. Um, because like the audio interface has been in this very thick plastic road case that in this indestructible piece of uh, equipment it's been in that for like four years so here's, here's one you probably <laughs> didn't keep though what the last time you bought glasses not like glass for your face like cups that perfect use for that that's You're a good one that's a good one um i haven't purchased um, I purchased a like a, uh, a a Christmas gift. It was like a charcuterie board thing, and you know, it came with the board. Don't need the box. And well, it came with the board, and it came with ceramic uh, like dip cups. And I know, and I know that so far that box has been kept, and I've seen it been pulled out twice now, and uh, that box has been kept due to its you know symmetrical nature and styrofoam kind of holding. You've taken out the box twice. I have seen it been taken out. I don't think I've ever personally taken it out. I've just what? been people taking it out so they can move it. I've just been privy to it. No, so it could get used, you know, with uh, with various For dips what? and charcuterie. Oh, I see. I see. The, so the exact use you don't, of the oh, board. Okay, okay. I see. You don't. You keep it in the box. Yes. Ah, okay. So yeah, we don't keep our charcuterie board in the box. That's kaput. That's in the recycling. But then when you have to move it and the nice little ceramic bowls cam, just like you said in, with keeping glass, keeping the boxes in yeah. which glasses come in, uh, there surely will be some benefit down the line. You got me there. You got me there. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm trying to rid, we just have so much storage. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to keep shit. That's another thing. Like, yeah. When you, The more space you have, the easier it is to fill that with stuff. Just stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know. I'm not. I'm. I'm still. I'm still yet to believe that any tool goes to waste. Mm -hmm. Like I probably have six hammers. <laughs> now, Cam, I some may what. call that. Some may call six hammers too many hammers, and I'm sure their first argument would be, "You only have two hands." And then you would probably counted... rebuttal with, what if a friend came over? And then you'd say, okay, great, you have four hands. And then you'd have to like follow up with, what if a third friend came over? And at that point, Cam, six or three people using two hammers apiece, what kind of project are you working on? <laughs> the thing is, they're all different types of hammers. Mm -hmm. oh, you have all... Some are heavier. You have a some ball are less point, heavy, some ball peen. Some are smaller heads, right? And then the, here's one which is like, I really questioned. Well, almost, I, I, I think, Cam, at that point, then, if, if all the different hammers serve a purpose, then I would have to support oh. you keeping the hammers. I mean, it's just like a table. You have a kitchen table, an end table, a coffee table. Yeah. They're Hammer all table? they're all tables, uh, but you wouldn't get rid oh, of one, you wouldn't yeah. get rid of one just because you are you wouldn't get rid of a coffee table because you have a bedside table because they serve separate functions. I probably have. At least six measuring tapes. Okay, so this I, one I'm uh, okay. No, here's this my guess. I'm so you really have, of course, the classic uh, uh, inches, classic inches and feet, and then you They're have one the which is just classic centimeters and meters, and then you have one which is some kind of uh, like our ancient archaic measuring or something like that. Stones. Or are they all number of stones. Or are they all the exact same? Is what you're saying? Very close. Damn I mean, it. I think Damn the difference it. is the sizes of them. The so, widths of them. Well, yeah, like could I, I could fit one on my car very easily, but I couldn't fit the other because it's thick and girthy. And it's the kind that if you stretch it across a lawn, you're like, we have to measure how long this yard is hmm. for whatever reason. Um, it's not going to like, it's not going to be flimsy and just like, you know, that sound. Mm hmm. I know the sound cam, but now you see, you, you brought up something different. You know, if, uh, if it's. A tape measure that you're keeping in your car for when you may need to measure the space or an, an object going into it. Yeah. It now serves its own Useful. purpose. It's the car right. tape measure. It's That's no longer just one of the tape measures. You know, the 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 you you may have three or four different sets of multi screw drivers. You know, where you have kind of kind of like ten and all of them different sizes, but right. you keep one in the car, and suddenly that's the car screwdriver. It's, it's in its car screwdriver. And then and then if you, if you have two of those in your car, then you have to ask ask it's yourself that many. question. Yeah, exactly. You know, but you need your car your car Allen keys, your car tape measure. 
your car screwdriver, you know, all those little things you might need uh, for moving a lot of stuff. I got, here's a good one I use in my car. Mm, give it to me. It's, it's a very small flathead screwdriver. So I have one on camera here. For those at home, it's probably the size of your pinky, uh, not thickness, but length. <laughs> and it just, it's a good scraper. Because it's a flathead, you just can get under stuff, you, you know, a little bit of that. I mean, when scraping, um, you're probably talking about cleaning out your ears while you're driving. That's probably yes. what you're talking about. Yeah. Sometimes that, yeah. So <laughs> you've said times, that, you've said I, that I, here I, on the podcast before, that you, uh, irregular things you put in your ears. Yeah, that's one of them. But also just something gets stuck. Of course. Right? Like maybe a little bit. Of course. Know, a, little bit, a little bit of mustard. A little bit of mustard on your, uh, your cup holder. A little bit of scrape, scrape. A little bit of mustard can because you just keep drinking you. those cups full of mustard. That's yeah, how that's oh, how they're getting all over your sauce. cup holder. Oh, that'd be so gross. Switch just it. leaving a full cup of mustard. You're feeling like I use it for dip. <laughs> <laughs> I like to dip my cucumbers in mustard. <laughs> it freezes over. It <laughs> yeah. Melts it. In the winter. Yeah. Hey, man, that sounds like... Yeah, they're, they're... I keep mayo in the winter just so it stays cold. There are some freaks out there, Cam. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Not me, though. I, I, I'm well adjusted. I got, I, got, I got one more social situation for you. Give it to me. So... Because we did this big cleaning, I got I got rid of a lot of free shit on Kijiji. Mm-hmm. And two of them. And I was thinking we could actually make like free on Kijiji. The hey, there's a, there's well, a segment hey, we hey uh, there. I haven't played that game in a long well, time. Well, I was thinking we could do it this this week, but I haven't found anything good for free. I should have saved it. But I think what I'm going to do on my next ad is say have to call um, to claim. And if anyone texts and is like, is this still available? I'll be like, call to claim. And they'll call and we'll just pick up the phone and be like, You've reached Free on Kijiji, the radio trivia show where one right answer gets you one free thing on Kijiji. Who's calling right now? And they'll be like, is this is this Cam with a free French presses? And you're like, that is, sir. Who was the star in Blade Runner, the original? And they're like, I don't know. You're like, that is too bad. Thanks for playing. Two C's in a pods. Free on Kijiji. I love that idea. Are you allowed to do that, Cam? Are you allowed? <laughs> Why? Of course, why not? I guess if you bleeped out their name, you'd have to bleep out their name. Uh, I think Ontario is a one-party consent uh, recording place. Cam, it's odd that you quickly jumped to one-party consent, which, uh, to be honest, Cam, I didn't even know that was—I didn't even know that was a term. It was it's odd. Yeah, that, odd well, that, I need it for work. Of, <laughs> when I make cold calls, I know I know which states are like. There, I can't record because that's a two-party consent place where, like, both parties need to consent to it. Okay. But, like, for example, California, no bueno. Texas, record all you want. Okay, okay. I'm glad that you had a quick uh, excuse as to, as to why you know so much information about consent law. Um, that, so would be, that would be a good this- idea, Cam, but uh, I do like the idea. And then, but then what do you say? How do, how, do, how do you line it up so that you get a caller while the podcast is happening? Oh, you just post the... Like, these things go like hotcakes, man. If you post something not even that good on there, your phone blows up. See, Cam, I do like the idea. However, I think it would work better if you, like, you record them when they call you. Because then, let's say, Cam, you and I are in the middle of a beautiful social situation. A little, a little back and forth, or, you yeah. know, we're at a hot segment of a halfway through a top five, and then we need to suddenly interrupt it for some bull- for some caller that may or may not be entertaining in the least. Gotcha. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? If we could find a way that, you know, or if if the, if, if we're if we're doing free on Kijiji trivia. We got to find a way that like that's all it is, so it doesn't interrupt, you know, anything else that pertinent oh, that might like be happening. That. I like that. Yeah, yeah, good point. And then we can do, we can have the recorded segment. Okay, we'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll chat offline, as they say in the biz. <laughs> I think they say off air. Offline. Off okay, so social social dilemma. Give it to me. So, I put up two French presses and as one ad, and then a portable chair as another ad. Okay. So one of those like beach chairs. Just we have other chairs that are better, and that was one that we had purchased because I went to the beach or something. And then Sounds I was like, right. now it's just we have two really good ones, and I have so many chairs in the back. Don't need it. Okay. Right. 
And in the French presses, we have 150 different methods of making coffee, and that's probably the least favorable one. So first and of all, other French presses, classic so. drip, number one. Yeah, that's uh, uh, yeah. That's number good two, one. pour over brew. That's a good number yep. two. Got it. Um, number three would be well the, the aforementioned French press. Uh, yeah. Number four, uh, instant. Uh, we don't have instant. Okay, okay. Seems like a really easy one for you guys to have. Um, wait, is this a social situation? Name how many different types no, of... No, oh, okay, no, sorry, no. my mistake. I, just, I thought you were just playing a game here. <laughs> Me? Play a game? No. Aeropress is another one we have. I don't even know what that means. It's... That's a good one. And then Nespresso. Yeah, the classic espresso. And then we have the Mako, uh, or the Mackie, or the Mako Espresso Maker, which is like a kind of like a... It's, that one's weird. I don't know how to explain it. So we have a plenty is what I'm trying to get at, and we didn't need these extra two pods. So anyway, I put these up as two separate ads, and this one lady messages about the chair, and she's like, hey, I can come pick it up tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And you're like, you're like, okay, cool, but, and I say, no problem. Just as an FYI, if someone says they're going to come pick it up earlier, it's theirs. I think that's a fair statement. Yeah, that's fair, especially it's free, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna be like I'm holding on to you for this because you said first. Yeah, if it's you like, were making well, you if you were making anything. sixty bucks, you're like sure, I'll take the sixty bucks. Um, yeah. But yeah, if it's just free, you're kind of like, look, it's gonna be on my front porch. So if it's not around, yeah. then somebody else took it. There you go. Yeah, and then she's like, all right, no problem. I'll come pick it up in two hours then. And I'm like, all right, that's good. Um, in like two hours. I'm thinking this is the end of the segment. I'm not going to get more and more people. My phone just starts blowing up with people on people on people on people being like, I'll take both the French presses and the chairs. And everyone's asking for both, right? <laughs> and then I just kind of give the same message where I'm like, you know, I, I kind of said I would give the other person two hours. So I just say like, hey, one's not available, but if they don't come pick it up, I'll let you know. The chair like or the French presses come grab it. And then the one guy's like, I'll be there in 15 minutes. He must, and now I'm he must really myself, want coffee. Oh, people just love free shit. And then I look at that one lady's profile who wants to come get the red chair, and I look at her offerings, and she's just selling a bunch of weird shit for, like, very low dollar. So, like, generic shirt, like, $4. Uh, cup, $1, right? Just, like, stuff that you're like, oh, it looks like you're turning around and selling stuff. So I'm getting the impression now you want this chair because you're going to put it up for $6 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that's not my intention. When I'm free on Kijiji, I like to ask someone, you want hey, what's the to first place you're going to sit in this chair? <laughs> right? Hey, what's the first song you played with my speakers? Right. Of course. Right? I, I, don't want, I don't want people turning a profit on my good deeds. So... Anyway, now the situation is I said, she said, I'll come back it up in two hours. I say yes. Another guy says, I want both. I'm there in 15 minutes. What do you do? Oh, man. Now, Cam, I think this one for me is difficult because I feel as though you've put in more energy for free things in the first place. I feel like if you're giving shit away for free, you would want zero interaction with whatever's happening. So I feel like you, the ad should say... On my front porch, if it's not there, someone's taking it. Like, kind of very simple, or, you know, at the end of the driveway, if it's gone, you missed it. And kind of, and like, do do not contact me, because that's what you're doing with it. Because, Cam, again, you said if you're having, you know, dozens and dozens of hits, someone's going to pick it up. You put it at the end of the driveway, and it's like chair and two things at end of driveway. If it's gone, it's gone, don't contact me. You know, I mean, you're the seller. You have all the power. So I think, you know, if I was, I mean, I think that's the position I would have taken in the first place. You know, I mean, you're, Cam, your time is your money. And how much time have you spent on this? Way too much. Once I got to like six hits, I'm like, too much, man. Exactly. At that point, you might as well have sold the uh, French press because then you would have at least made your money back. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good point. So I didn't do that, obviously. I should have. I, I think that's the next time I do it. I'm just going to – but I love the interaction. Mm. I love I love the people being like – I kind of like the race, right? <laughs> I kind of like – I, I kind of like the people being like when someone's like, I can pick it up tomorrow, and you're like, too bad. I got someone coming in 
one hour. What can you do? What and can like you do about minutes. it? You're like, all right, well, I'm gonna leave my porch. Go for it. Like, yeah, it's like um, first. it's like uh, you order a Domino's from two different Domino's locations, and then see yeah. which one see which one gets there first. Love it. You follow them on the pizza tracker, you know. And then here, here's a system that I did for one of the things. I just said, hey, I'll leave it on the porch now. Ring my doorbell once you get here so I know that you've taken it. No, I'm not going to greet you. Just like, I just want to know that it's gone kind of thing. Yeah, okay. That's it. So what do you do? Do you, do you give it to the lady who looks like a partial reseller? Or do you give it to the, the Chad who's like, I just want it all, baby. I'll uh, be there in 15. Uh, yeah, see, that's what's... You, t- yeah. You put yourself in a peculiar situation. Well, because, Cam, I think you put yourself in the situation because now a lying comes into it. Now it's an ethical thing. Now you've gotten yourself into a situation where you either have to say, sorry, the chair chair is not available, but here are the whatevers. And then you try to time it so that, like, you only put the French presses outside, wait for him to pick those up, and then you put the chair after so that guy doesn't see it and goes, like, oh, sweet, I'm going to take that too. I think maybe that would be the play. You know, say okay to this guy. Say okay to this guy. You take the two French presses, you put them on your driveway. As after you find out that he's picked them up, then you put the chair there so the uh, this other woman can grab her thing. Well, I didn't do that. What'd you do? Once I saw that she was trying to resell things, I said, "No, nope, oh, you're that was your uh, line. you're trying to profit. You're trying to profit on my good deeds, and I won't allow for that." So I cut her off, yeah. and I gave him to the Chad, whose actual name was Brad. So then what happened, uh, you, you, you told this woman, sorry, object, everything, it's all gone? I just said, hey, uh, someone just came and picked it up right now. Sorry for any, mis- sorry for any mishaps. And then she, what did she say back? Never heard back from her again. Wow. Yeah, kind of like, not a great end to the story, but just a fun little social situation and getting people to race. So I think that's why I like to, maybe the next time I'll do it, is I love I love giving shit away for free. Personally. You do, you do. I think we just got I gotta find a fun way to do it. Yeah, by answering some kind but but see Cam then at that point now you do have to uh you know incorporate some kind of hey it's free, knock on my door and no no but see yeah no that that needs to happen by phone. Uh this is so tough. Yeah, I'd love a scavenger hunt too. If it's like something half decent. Oh, give it's a- like, hey, it's free, but there is a scavenger hunt involved. Give away something nice for free, um, but then like it's a uh, they have to find a riddle. <laughs> and yeah, then figure out like, where come, you're hiding. It's like come to my door and you will find the first clue. Um, you know. No, see uh, what I what I would the, <clears throat> what I would advise against that. Cam to you is where does where does honey hide his poo? No, no, or no, something like that. No, and you're like, what? What, no, what does that mean? No, right? And it's at the park. No, with, like by the bees. I don't no, know. No, I cam. I cannot support that cam because if you are uh, if you, if you're freely associating with the types of people who are picking shit up for free on Kijiji in Kitchener, Ontario, that's a specific brand of person. Do you want to invite them to your home? Where where your kin and your dog, uh, oh re- maybe the mailbox maybe reside, the mailbox you know, because you, uh, you see this bullshit riddle, you're like fuck this. Just keep hammering away at the door. Next thing you know, you're breaking into the door. Next thing you know, there are all your different ways of making coffee fucking stolen, because you wanted to play some bullshit game. We got to keep these people away from your house, Cam. The more stuff you sell in Kijiji, I'm worried for just your safety. Maybe we do is we just give the address and then we just say like at this mailbox you will find your first clue. <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder how many people would truly go for it. Uh, you know, I would think if I was a creepy sex criminal and I was trying to lure somebody to uh, hang out in a pit that I've dug in the bottom of my basement, I would probably start with some kind of outlandish riddle hunt. Um, what, what if I said like what if I said like you're allowed to mess with me for three clues? Again, uh, yeah, yeah it, it you would have to find the person who would think that's fun and not be sketched out in the late in like in the least. 
Yeah, I, could I think that would be a hard cross section. I think of now because it's like in our times, people like they don't have much to do, and they're like exactly like more time for them, more like, more time for um digging up pits in basements, and more time to fill those yeah. pits with people. Like if if I were to say like I have a second pair of these Apple headphones, okay, I don't need them. They're, they'd be kind of useful to have because you never know when yours are gonna bust. But if I said in the package, Apple headphones, free. Require scavenger hunt. Yeah, you would really have to uh, be out in the open about it in the advertisement. You can't be like free and then they'd be like, I'll come pick it up. You're like, yes, but there's a scavenger hunt involved and you'll get your first clue here. You'd be like, what does that mean? You're like, expect to take two to three hours. That's a long time. It has to, it has to be something good. <laughs> It'd have to be something really good for you to do a scavenger hunt. Because, uh, Cam, I mean, wh one thing you'd have to consider, is this a scavenger hunt in which you need to uh, get there by driving? What if somebody lives? I, what if somebody lived walking distance from your home, and that was their plan? They're like, "Oh, I don't have a car. Uh, I just take the bus around." But there's little headphones. I'm gonna go grab it, and then it's like, "Wait, I now have to go to the other side of town. I don't have that means." Maybe, of maybe what I could do is like do it like at nearby parks where it's like. Uh, you know, where the, there's like a train, there's train tracks near me and be like, where the train tracks meet the fishermen, your next clue arise. And that's like <laughs> Fisher Hall and, and the trail, the trail, the trail, the rail, railroad train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you, and then it's like, you go to the bridge and there's like a note. I don't know. It all sounds, then, it all sounds well and good. Just yes, Cam, how good does that thing have to be like i'm looking you know i don't know it would be you're, you're giving away your vacuum cleaner for free you're giving away that nice set of sony headphones the sony bluetooth headphones you're giving those away for free it's like hey this is like a 100 hundred dollar value there actually is value to this object not just it's a folding chair but i think some people like when they're bored and they have nothing to do in the middle of winter are you gonna look at this and be like it's not even about the headphones. Me, yeah, it's hopefully. about the fun, right? You You're like, I get to go on a... I, when's the last time you went on a scavenger hunt? And Cam, we'll never know until you actually try. You're going to have to put in a... You'll have to put in a fair amount of time, of your own time, <laughs> into planning this. Uh, finding yeah. the perfect object. First I, need, first, I need something good. I, well, that's exactly it, right? It needs to be, uh, yeah. you know, uh, unelectronic. Something that does, you know, is, is it something that has, like, at least a $100 store value? Is that sort of, I like... I was going to say maybe, like, even 25 Okay. How many, How much good stuff is out there for 25 bucks? Like a, like a shirt? It's not even that good. It's <laughs> that... I think someone's going to see that and be like, hmm... I'm up for the challenge. That's 20 You know? Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Well, yeah, Cam, I mean, you know, we, we won't know until we try, and maybe, uh, is this something you are going to try? Yeah, I, I, I'm excited to think about this now. This will be something in the back of my mind. Yep, give it, give it some real thought. I think that's the way okay. we make this work. Or <laughs> tape measures, because I obviously have too many of those. Well, you put one in your car, and then you only have uh, or, four ooh, too many. You know what I could do? A little treasure box of things that are lesser value... Mm -hmm. But have like together make like you know that fifty dollar mark. So it's like a pair of headphones, two measuring tapes, um, you know, I'm just a bunch a of like hammer. All of these. <laughs> yeah, in a shoebox, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, now we're getting somewhere. You know, maybe you have a lot of little things that you're trying to get rid of instead of just the one big thing that you might not want to get rid of, but you would have to for the purpose of this scavenger hunt. Yeah, I think this would be good. And then what I can do is maybe like bury the box and like put an X where the box lays. Well, you'll have to hang out by the ending. Oh yeah, I guess because you'll I, have I, to I, see I how it goes. Like, you'll I, have to make sure. I would just say like tech, you know, text me as you go, kind of thing. Okay, no, I would I say I would say it. hang out there. Uh, my 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 family used to do a or like my step family used to do a. Uh, I guess like an Easter scavenger hunt throughout the neighborhood where they would tie, they would put candy, like hide candy, all like in a bunch of parks all throughout the neighborhood and give us riddles and clues and we'd have to ride our bikes to go get there. And I remember one year, uh, like kids had clearly, they just, they just stole it. They just stole one of the clues um, because it was the same thing. It was like, we may have had a, we may have had walkie talkies on us. I don't, I don't think, I think it was like just slightly pre cell phone. 
but it would be like the parents would be hanging out at the house and then we would walkie them as we were going around. We got to this one place, we couldn't find the clues. Our parents drive over where it turns out that, yeah, kids clearly just stole the candy and the clue. So uh, then they just like remembered the clue and had to tell us from there and then we had to go. So you would need some kind of monitoring because you can never account for how shitty people are. Fair enough, yeah. yeah. Even if it may mean like a two-man operation, you know, like one person at the ending making sure. Because, yeah, if you're a kid and let's say you uncovered a box with an X on it then had a bunch of shit in it, you're clearly going to take that. Good point. And I would just be worried that, you know, you would spend so much time on this very fun scavenger hunt and then it would end with uh, – it just could end with, on, with disappointment for both sides. Put some serious thought. Yeah, you know, I think we have to put some serious idea. thought into uh, you know, especially a community wide scavenger hunt. Where, yeah, what's stopping a dog from from just sniffing it and scratching it out? Nor was what's stopping anything really. Good point. Yeah. Well, I think we've we've, we've really blabbered on, but uh, well, hey, a lot we'll, to ca- we'll a, we'll, a lot we'll a lot to again. catch up on. Yeah, a lot to catch up on with the new year and all those things. Want to play a final game? We'll wrap it up. Whatever you, whatever you want to do, Reverse Magnum Boy. Tell me about wrapping it up. All right. Well, we're gonna play one last game for you folks at home. It's called Headline or Asinine. Hey, 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 uh, sexy voice, sexy of course. Voice. Real headlines, fake headlines. It's our first guest, our first, uh, it's our first game of the uh, the episode. We've been so much time doing on these social situations, which uh, will definitely should definitely become a part of the show's future. I think. Okay, we're ready for your first headline. I'm ready for it. Woman discovers her severe pain was from a dead turtle stuck in her lady parts. Dead turtle. Um, yes. Jesus Christ. So you, you, so you've heard stories about, you know, um, like, uh, uh, somebody finds a condom like a few days later, still wrapped up in there or something, right? You'll hear, you'll hear those types of stories, you know, and yeah, they start to like hurt itch and then they, they have a big fart and the next thing you know, condom pops out, right? Like that's a classic story everyone's heard of before. Um, so something getting like stuck in there, that makes sense, but a turtle, like, that is too crazy for you to have made it up. But then, like, I don't get how it could be real. Or you made it up hoping that I would think it was too crazy. Say it was as- say it was a headline, but it actually was, in fact, asinine. Um, because I like to th- believe in the crazy things that happen in the world. I like to believe in a world where, yeah, turtles can get stuck in every single orifice without us knowing. How small was the turtle? How big was the orifice? Too many questions, and for that optimism that will never die within me, I'm going to say that's a headline. That is a headline, and yes. as is tradition, maybe not the, the war. It's just kind of a sad story. Um, so a British woman who was a resident of the Canary Islands, 26-year-old, was out partying with a few different British friends in the Fanta Bay Beach and had no memory of what happened during the night and over the next few days started feeling sick and presented to the hospital. They found a very miniature Chinese three-keel pond turtle was lodged inside of her vagina. It is now caused a serious infection, and there have been an investigation looking if this was some sort of sexual assault. Now, I didn't know that turtles could be that small. I sort of thought, like, at you know, when a turtle pops out, it would be maybe the size of, uh, you know, like a pack of gum. <laughs> no, they can get pr- pretty small. Like, think about think about like miniature turtles that you see in people's aquarium. Yeah, something like that. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, that's that's weird, and then that's wild. Um, turtles, man, just you know, poke your head out. If they just poke your head out for a little bit. Cam, I got one here for you. Ready for it? Uh, high school cheerleader suspended for profanity laced Snapchat rant. Yeah, I can see this. Um, high school cheerleader. I'm just wondering if she's got a racist because I think if you were just saying like you know, F this, F this, F this. I feel like 
she might use some of her cis white privilege to say some things that you know might have uh, caught caught the line of the the black principal who was like yeah we're not going to tolerate any of this uh, you know speaking about the uh, <laughs> and the uh, <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and see. You probably said something a little off uh, label. Headline. Cam, you're right. It's a headline um, coming out of the Central Pennsylvania School District, um, who are actually in hot water right now after they violated a student's free speech rights after the student was suspended from the school and her cheerleading team after a post she made on Snapchat. So this happened uh, when the student, who she's a minor, so we don't know her name, Cam, so don't even look it up. Uh, so this student didn't make the varsity cheerleading team, and on Snapchat she put out say, uh, saying, fuck school, fuck softball, fuck cheer, fuck everything. A teammate, took a, screen- oh, a teammate took a screenshot and showed it to one of the cheerleading coaches, and as a result, the teen was suspended from the, the school and from the cheerleading team for a full year. The school claimed the school claimed that the post violated the teen's pledge to respect her coaches, teammates, and alma mater, and to refrain from using obscene and abusive languages. After the school board refused to overturn the decision, um, the the family took the court to the local sorry took took the took the case to the local district court where the court ruled the school trampled on the girl's free speech rights, especially since she wasn't in school when she made the post. Therefore, she had no, therefore the school had no legal right to punish her. The court ruled Perfect. in the teen's favor, of course, ordered the school district to award the teen $1 in damages, which I thought was really weird, because uh, I think it needs to be a money amount. Um, so $1 it is, and as well as to pay for all of her legal bills and expunge her from her disciplinary record. I'm sure this happened. I, this, I, I caught this story, and the only reason I liked it, I got to bring it up, because this happened to a girl in my school, in elementary school. Where there was like a sleepover of like the all the boys were at one guy's house, you know, we're all there, and then all like the girls are at another girl's house, and we're all on MSN together, right? And then like the guys, girls have webcam, so we're all on MSN and webcamming, and one of the girls flashed us, um, on webcam. Uh, so we're probably like what grade seven, maybe? I think grade seven. If not grade seven, grade eight. And I do remember that just like the Monday or Tuesday at school, uh, somehow the teachers got wind of it. Everyone just so blown away. Yeah, um, it was. uh, And then something like that. She gets called down to the office. I remember I was in her class. I remember like her getting called down to the office. uh, And then she was suspended for a full week. And uh, it was crazy that it was like it was just her. And everyone was like in trouble, but not suspended like she was. We were all the re- like the rest of the guys and girls were just like in trouble or like probably in the office or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I bet this happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, I imagine um, social media has brought a weird new lens to what people do outside of school. Yeah. All right. Headline or nine woman accused of trying to kill husband with foot cream. Foot cream. Now this is a, now this is a classic, um, a fake out. Done it? No, no, it's classic fake out, right? Like, it's it's like when you think, um, you you think, let's say, a roommate is using your 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 mayonnaise. And you keep saying like, and you, and you keep saying, Dan Turner, uh, well, why are you using my mayonnaise? And he's like, guys, I'm not using your mayonnaise. And you're like, shut up, Dan Turner. You're using my goddamn mayonnaise. And he's like, guys, why do we need rules? And you're like, shut the fuck up, Dan Turner. You're using my mayonnaise. He won't agree. So what do you do, Cam? You take a little bit of conditioner. You go down to your local shopper's drug mart, buy some Tresemme, and then pour the whole bottle into the mayonnaise um, just to hear the reaction of, you know, you put put it get a nice ham and swiss ready to go slop it full of conditioner he takes that one full bite and you get your revenge cam i think um and you come out with a knife and stab and then you go with a knife go of course stab them stab <laughs> them in the back uh literally not not figuratively though because i don't think we were ever close enough to <laughs> kind of have that stab back relationship um so that i think this is going to be a situation like this it's like, honey, you're using my, 
You're using my Rub A5. You're using my Rub A535, honey. I told you not to use my Rub A535. And he's like, I'm not using your Rub A535. Then why is the tube half empty? I'm sure it was less intended to be poison as it was intended to be, yeah, like uh, put itching powder in it so your foot itches or something like that. But then never knew it would get out of control. Maybe a bad allergic reaction. Uh, this is a headline. No, I mean, this one. Damn up. it! Good, good rationale, though. I that's I mean that's exactly I think the way to play it. If I if I, I right. if I yeah. if I were to play if I were if I if I was doing this one. Okay, Cam, I got one here for you. Ready? Headliner asinine. Uh, vegans are at a higher risk for bone fractures than meat eaters. Well, I think the thing about these reports is I could probably find the exact opposite report and say, like, vegans bone stronger than any person's. And it, <laughs> did you ever hear about that? <laughs> did you ever hear about that story about it was um, someone kind of making fun of the academic journaling process where they just made a bunch of, like, extremely false claims and got it published by several journals who peer-reviewed it? They weren't obviously the best like peer reviewed journals, but basically what you learned is that it's a pay for play for system. Okay. My point being is that you can be you can pretty much make any claim on a published review and get it accredited by someone if you're willing to pay for it and have people be like, yeah, no, we reviewed this. This all seems legit. Um, so that being said, obviously, uh, someone might have funded this from the meat industry to say that veganism has poor bone quality. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. I'm just saying that these studies are always something to be wary of, but I'm going to say true. Headline. You are going to say it's a headline. Well, that is, in fact, a headline, Cam. Don't know who's financially backing this. However, this is a study that came out of Oxford University in England. Across the pond, where they reported that vegans have a 43% higher chance of having bone fractures anywhere on the body. And even actually higher risk of hip fractures. Uh, which is weird. The Ooh, study, the ones. study took place over a ten-year period that found uh, close to twenty more cases per one thousand people um, uh, over that of people who ate meat, um, and that uh, hip fractures actually happened two point three times percent more likely, which is odd. So the study involved fifty-four thousand people, thirty thousand meat eaters, oh, eight thousand uh, who were no meat but f uh, but would eat fish. Uh, 15,000 vegetarians and 2,000 vegans. Um, over the course of the 18 years in which this study was uh, this study was kind of practiced or whatever, uh, 3,941 fractures occurred. Uh, so there you have it. You know, I think the, 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 the big question, though, is why? Why are vegans more at risk? Um, the study confirmed uh, something that scientists have known for years and actually something to many – the results to many professionals were not surprising at all. Fractures can be partially explained by the protein and calcium intakes um, uh, and how it is related to the bioavailability of those key nutrients in bone health. Vegans may have consumed the right amount of calcium, but many plant-based sources like calcium or like of calcium, like spinach are not as bioavailable as dairy. Same with protein quality where plant proteins, where the amino acid ratio does not support resorption and remodeling as well as the amino acid ratio in animal proteins. Uh, so pretty much just that. If you are a vegan, uh, watch out, stop, and you should probably be taking supplements of vitamin B12 and vitamin calcium. D. Good. Well, thanks for the, uh, the science broadcast, Cam. You're welcome. That's why I'm here. Nerd, nerd alert. Nerd. Okay. Burp, 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 burp. Nerd alert. Medline. Little pump. <laughs> Banned from flying JetBlue after rapper refuses to wear face mask on flight. Little pump, <laughs> so refreshing to hear a ha to hear a, a good little pump story. Um, I feel like uh, most um, kind of SoundCloud uh, guys. They had a song, then we never heard from them again. And Lil Pump's one of the ones who had a song we never heard from again, but is still alive. Because uh, yes, I feel like most of the ones still the tattoos. I feel like most of the ones that we don't hear from is because they're dead now. 
uh, and that would probably yeah. be a big part of it. But hey, Oshiega 2021, Lil Pump's going to be there. I mean, it's going to be hard for him to get there. I guess he's going to have to uh, ride a bus if um, if Jet Blue, they say Jet Blue, West Jet, something like that. On airline, JetBlue. On airline, JetBlue. Yeah, uh, you know, people are banned from flying for those types of reasons, and Lil Pump seems like a kind of guy who would do that. My biggest question is, Pump, buddy, where's your G five? You're suddenly, pr- uh, you're you're suddenly flying commercial. What the hell is going on, Lil Pump's um, life? JetBlue. That Gucci Gang money uh, ran out. I mean, if he's in JetBlue, I at least hope he's in first class of JetBlue. Hopefully, he's not in fucking. Whatever they call the slaves in the back. Whatever class that is. Um, yeah, the, I, I I totally believe this. My bigger head, my bigger question. I I I leave with more questions. Like what happened to Lil Pump's money? I streamed that Gucci Gang song a couple times. Where my, did did my royalties not go to help his uh his cause? Lil Pump should be in a G five. I'm starting the Kickstarter right now. Uh, this is a headline. This is a headline. Uh, the 20-year-old artist whose real name is Gazzy Garcia. Let that sink Poor in. Na- bad name, guy. Lil Pump was way better. <laughs> <laughs> he flew to, from Los Angeles to Fort Lauderdale, where he was verbally abusive, verbally abusive with crew members after being asked multiple times and refusing to comply with Jeff Blue's face covering policy. Where are you going? Why are you going to Fort Lauderdale? Because that Florida's the Florida's the place to be these days. No, Fort Lauderdale, which is in Texas. That's in Texas. Whoops. Yes. <laughs> Thought it was in Florida. Uh, why are you going to Texas? He's he, maybe he's maybe he's going to be on Rogan. No, Fort Lauderdale is one hundred percent a city in Florida. Book, I was right. They said, yeah, not a chance. <laughs> You're not getting your money back. Yeah, well, Fort Lauderdale's not in Florida. Yeah, I, I literally, nice I literally just um, clicked. He po- posts some stuff on Twitter, <laughs> and he has now alleged that he will never wear a face mask in 2021. I mean, that's fine. I don't think we were asking. What? I don't think we were asking Lil Pump. Uh, you know what his, huh? you know what was going on in his life. I don't think we were. I don't think we were truly wondering. Like, hey, Pump, what's new? Tell me about it. Tell me about your life, bud. He also said that Corona is fake. Well, you know, I mean, uh, that's uh, that's one step away. Way to go, little pump. I so, uh, can't wait to hear from you next week. That is our. That's my headlines. What do you got for me? Yeah, I have one. I have one more here for you. Uh, headliner asks nine. Stats Canada says no Karens have been born since July 2020. No what? No carrots. Yes, Cam. No, no carrots have been born. No, Cam. Karens. Oh, really? Since July 2020. Wow. To think the power of a meme has. <laughs> yeah, I could totally see that. Um, they maybe a few Carolinas, but they're like, let's uh, make sure not to shorten that in any sense of the word. Um. Sad, sad for all the Karens out there. I know a few really nice Karens. Uh, I don't know. I don't know any mean ones. Actually, I know one mean one, but she's my friend. So, um, shame to see the death of a name, uh, death of a salesman. Headline. Cam, okay, that one's ass nine. I made that one up here for you. Um, but you are right. My aunt Karen is a lovely woman. Uh, a, a great mother and an even better grandmother. Uh, and that's my. That's the only Karen I know. Two? No, both well, Karens I know are fantastic women. They have they yeah, have beautiful I, children. I and uh, beautiful what? Beautiful children, and that's about that. That's good. Yeah, exactly. Is that All it? Right, do you well, do you, do you uh, have one that, more? Do you have one? Yeah, I gave you three. I gave you three. Oh, you gave me three, and I gave you three. God, I guess that's. All the time that we have for our big uh, first episode of 2021. Cannot wait. Hopefully by the end of the year, we may hit that big hundo. But until then, you rate, review, like, and subscribe. The podcast is everywhere. Spotify, Apple Podcasts. What else? Stitcher Premium. Google Plus. Is that? No, Google Play. That's what it is. Google Play. Podcast. Google, no, it's Google Okay. Podcast. Google Podcasts. YouTube. All those things. Great. And folks at home, never forget 
It has been scientifically proven that bigger forks lead you to eat less. Hit those 2021 January goals. Give up on them after that. I'll talk to you next week. Take care, folks. Continuing tonight on two C's in a pod. 96.7 on your. Two C's in a pod, 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 two